This is ABC Fora. This book of mine, Due Inheritances, is stated on page one. A cry for help, an attempt to take our first Australians out of that imposed category of perceived inferiority that has prompted since 1788 governments of all flavours and persuasions to impose on them well-meaning but inevitably flawed policies. We must rid ourselves forever of the one-size-fits-all attitude that we constantly impose on Aboriginals and Torres Strait Island people. We must establish at birth an individual file on every child born in this country and treat every child as an invaluable asset whose potential must be taken to full achievement. Especially, we must do that in respect of every first Australian child. It doesn't happen at the moment. The file must contain all the boxes to be ticked in order to do an Obama on the child, to provide on a considered individual level a safe and loving environment, good health, good education, employment prospects, freedom from persecution or discrimination, maximum opportunity for a fulfilled life. My book begins, I had it tucked away in the middle somewhere and the publisher said, no, no, put that first, that's crucial. Begins with a poignant comparison of the opportunities established 76 years ago on the basis of race to two Australian people, Ted Egan and Uni Numbajimba. Both born in the year 1932, Ted Egan was slotted as an individual into a white fella system that eventually enabled him to achieve the highest possible position in the Northern Territory, that of administrator. Uni number Jinber at birth, however, was just categorised as one of the faceless blackfellas. Eventually someone took a stab at a date of birth and that was registered. Eventually her birth was registered. Eventually she was counted on the, on the census. But she was a faceless blackfella. She had no status as an individual. She was subject to discriminatory legislation. Her basic human rights were neglected to a deplorable level. The Australian system failed her in every respect possible. Throughout her life, she was poor, uneducated, illiterate, and in bad health. I guess you could say she was lucky that she lived to 76, when the average age expectancy of an average woman in Central Australia is about 50 years. But her quality of life in latter years was appalling. I wanted uni to be at the launch of my book in Alice Springs in December, but sadly she died about two weeks before. Along the, way, along the way, she'd led a wonderful life. She was a positive contributor to an Australia that knows so little about people like her. She worked hard in the white fellow word, finding a compromise between her eminent status as a senior Wildbury ceremonial leader and an admirable Christian who never once tasted alcohol. We are up a number, Jimba. It's just not fair that in Australia we still have an inbuilt system that makes it so easy for the Ted Egans to achieve and the uni number gender to be discarded largely because of attitudes about race and particularly about race as it applies to our own first Australians. I urge you to read my book. I painted a very dismal picture on its 150 pages, 50 pages of doom and gloom. And on a personal level, I'm saddened by the fact that so many of my first Australian friends have died at what is an unacceptable age. I'm appalled at the ongoing level of deterioration in Aboriginal society that's taking so many people, particularly young people and children, into a meaningless life riddled by sickness, disease, poverty, illiteracy, inadequacy, disempowerment, a sterile life that can only lead them into antisocial attitudes, addictive behavioural patterns, hopelessness, welfare dependence, and what in places like Alice Springs, Halls Creek, Fitzroy Crossing can only be called subsidised crime where the government is paying them skimpy little amounts of social benef service benefit in a, in a bewildering society where the easy thing is to go and bust into the so-and-so club and pinch it, a couple of bottles of rum and a carton of cigarettes and wipe yourself out. I'm normally very positive by nature, yet I'm intrigued by the fact that my book, in over two months, has sold about 2,000 copies, and yet there hasn't been one single word of intelligent reaction for or against what is, I submit, uh, the most controversial book ever written on first Australian issues in Australia. And such silence is hard for me to understand from the people who are on a daily basis witnesses to the wholesale chaos that does prevail 
in places like Halls Creek, Fitzroy Crossing, Broome, Darwin, Alice Springs, Mount Isa, Port Augusta. And things will get much, much worse unless some drastic action is taken by Australian society generally, mainly through the empowerment of first Australian leaders, putting aside some nonsensical practices that are currently flaunted as being positive policies. This is ABC Fora.